Hello everyone and welcome back to computer vision lecture series. Uh, this is lecture 7 part 1. Uh, in this lecture we are going to talk about uh, epipolar geometry. We are going to introduce uh, uh, some concepts of uh, stereo vision and then uh, calculate some disparity map and then uh, see how we can uh, evolve or how does the epipolar geometry evolves from that uh, perspective. And then uh, in the second part, we are also going to look into, uh, uh, so at the end of this uh, uh, part, you will see that we are going to uh, compute uh, some essential metrics and uh, subsequently introduce the fundamental metrics as well. And uh, from that point on in the next part, we will explore how to estimate the fundamental metrics using an eight point algorithm as well as how we can do some robot robust model fitting uh, with ransack okay so let's begin um, this is a simple stereo system here our aim is to recover some depth by um, two different images so uh, you capture two different images of the same scene and uh, the uh, th so when you move around and take uh, an Im another image uh, without changing the camera and uh, knowing the distance that you moved uh, you are capturing a bit uh, different image which is called which is usually a called uh, stereo image pair so you have these two image pairs and uh, how do you uh, recover depth from it is it's a simple uh, triangulation problem which you have to solve so O and O dash, uh, o dash here represent camera centers of uh, um, uh, this uh, image captures that you generated from these two different locations. Uh, so F is constant in both the cameras. Um, this is the X that was projected in the image plane for the first uh, image. And X dash is the uh, projection of the same uh, point in the world in the second image. And Z is the distance of the of your camera system from the um, or, or the camera center from the world uh, point. Um, basically, we assume a parallel optical axis, so you did not have any rotation or uh, uh, movement in any other direction uh, of these two cameras when you captured the uh, these two images. And um, we already know the camera parameters, so. Uh, this is the kind of um, geometrical uh, construction that we can uh, come up with. We know the f, we know the t distance which is the separation between the um, camera centers. Um, we also know the z, z is the distance of uh, the world coordinate or the world point p from the uh, from the axis joining the two camera centers. So o l and o r are left and right cameras so you know this simple terminologies. Uh, here you, we see a simple um, mathematical uh, uh, construction where uh, you see uh, P1, uh, P and PR to be uh, one triangle and OL, P and OR to be another triangle and they are similar triangle and using the properties of uh, similar triangle uh, you can uh, with similar triangles the ratios of their uh, angles and the uh, 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 sides are, uh, are are the same. So using that uh, idea, you just uh, calculate or solve for z, and you will know the distance between the point and the camera center. So using the disparity, or you or you can find the disparity uh, either way. So uh, you can solve one for one with the other, and uh, that's how you compute the disparity using a stereo system. So our goal usually is to recover depth by finding image coordinate x that corresponds to x in these two different image planes right but we have assumed a lot of things in this we have assumed that we know the camera parameters we know the relationship in this case also so with the stereo setup we know and we have enforced uh, parallel axis uh, the same camera system and so on and so forth so we know those calibration parameters but how how come uh, what if we don't have that so that is another problem that can arise which is called a cal calibration problem and a correspondence problem so we have assumed here that x and x dash in these two image planes are um, 
uh, points representing the same point in the 3D world. But how do we, uh, if we don't know this, how do we search for these matching points? So we have discussed also in the previous lectures about feature detectors and uh, key point detectors. So uh, that's an, that's a correspondence problem. How do we correspond one point uh, to be the exact same uh, or to be the same point in another image plane, right? So that's another uh, correspondence problem that uh, arises from this uh, um, from uh, from this goal as well. So let's say if you have uh, an image I, I on the left and on the right you have an I dash image which is uh, a stereo pair of this uh, uh, left image and if you could find uh, the disparity map uh, dis uh, disparity map D uh, which will show us the distances uh, this this map shows the distances of um, each point in this image as uh, uh, with respect to the camera so the nearer points are uh, more uh, uh, bright in color and the farther um, points are a bit darker so you can imagine with perspective geometry uh, when you take when you move your camera around and take another picture from the same of the same scene uh, the points nearer to the camera will move more than the points which are farther away from the camera and therefore the points that are uh, closer to the camera have brighter um, uh, values here whereas the ones which are farther have darker values. Uh, so what we want to find is this kind of correspondence that x dash if we know the disparity map we can calculate x dash to be the uh, the disparity of between x and y in uh, x and the y coordinate. So basically uh, here we have assumed that in there is no movement in the y direction and therefore we can uh, correspond x dash to x using the disparity map and using this we can cal compute basically uh, the depth of uh, or the relative depth and if once we know the relative depth uh, it's easier to calculate or estimate or fix a scale of the image and then actually calculate the uh, original uh, depth. So what do we know from this? We already know in this setup uh, the calibration for the two cameras. We know the intrinsic matrices for both the cameras. Uh, for example, F th that we have, uh, uh, we know the internal uh, scales. We know the uh, focal length and uh, focal length F and so on and so forth. And uh, we also know the baseline distance T in parallel camera case. So in the stereo camera, stereo setup here, we know this distance. Uh, uh, so this is the distance uh, t between these two cameras, which which we already know. And uh, R and T rotation and translation of the world coordinate or the um, uh, of the cameras. If we, if the camera systems are not parallel, then um, R and T are usually also known because we know from which points we are capturing both the images. And for correspondence for every pixel. Uh, we need that uh, we need dense correspondence but we uh, we can find that dense correspondence and we can find um, e e for each point which uh, point in the other image corresponds to the original point so these are the information that we already know and uh, yeah so uh, where do we search so that's the so for, for solving correspondence uh, for every pixel where do we search where do we start the search mm. Uh, any two image uh, pairs can have uh, any number of combinations of uh, um, uh, of perspective views, right? Uh, for example, in this case, uh, this point or the, this object corresponds to this object in the on the right image. So let's say we fix um, this points and then, uh, but but the, but our search space is quite uh, large in this case, right? It's not easy to find. Uh, uh, where this point will correspond to in this image, right? Um, but what if we have uh, a way to find out um, where a point in one image can lie? Uh, what if we, can, we are able to reduce the search space? So let's say, for example, uh, you fix this this object here, and you want to find the correspondence of this object in this image. You can do a feature matching or feature uh, template matching, apply template matching algorithms and find this point across these images, right? But it's very exhaustive and it's very 
um, uh, computationally expensive and naive approach. It is not uh, grounded into any um, theoretical um, background. And uh, the more important part point is that uh, sometimes it happens that um, uh, these images are not so clear. Uh, that uh, they are taken from the same image. Second, sometimes there is occlusion. Sometimes uh, it's not possible to see this image in the same scale in the other image. So there are a lot of issues here. So what if um, we can reduce the search space? So that is what uh, epipolar geometry brings into uh, or tries to solve this problem. So what is the key idea of epipolar uh, geometry? The key idea is the um, uh, solution which is called uh, epipolar constraint. So we will talk about how we can um, uh, develop this, this constraint. So what does the epipolar geometry says? Uh, let's say you have an image plane pi here and uh, pi dash is another image plane. Uh, P is a world uh, point. Uh, o is the camera center for the, uh, for the image plane pi and O dash is the camera center for the image plane pi dash. Um, uh, the epipolar constraint says that um, let's say uh, through this camera you're uh, viewing this point P. Now uh, this P point P can be anywhere in this uh, line. It could be uh, P2, it could be P1 or it could be P. Uh, so when you look at, uh, at this P point in this image, uh, we don't know the distance of this P point, right? But let's say you have, uh, you view the same point P uh, on uh, pi dash pl uh, plane and you want to search where p could be and p could only lie along this line right it could not lie anywhere else and this is what uh, epipolar constraint is about from the perspective of uh, o dash camera system p can be um, p can be found only along this line could be uh, p dash p1 dash p2 dash uh, uh, and it can be only on this line and this is the line on pi dash plane where the possible correspondences of uh, p can be found and or the potential matches for uh, p could be found um, it's a, there is a mistake here we are talking p but uh, we are writing x so please bear with me in this case um, uh, X is a generic name that I'm uh, using for any point uh, uh, in the world. Uh, so capital P will be corresponding to capital X. X small x dash will uh, represent P prime. Uh, small x uh, represents here uh, P. So again, what does epipolar constraint uh, says? That any point P in one uh, image plane can lie along any can be found or the, its correspondence can be found along this L dash line and similarly any point P dash in pi dash plane can be found along the epipolar line or along this line L in the plane pi that is what the epipolar constraint is uh, some definitions here um, some notational uh, definitions uh, o O dash, the line that joins the two camera centers, is called uh, baseline. Um, the projection of O on pi dash plane is E dash. This is an epipole. Similarly, another epipole is E, which is the projection of uh, O dash on the plane pi. And basically, uh, these are epipoles and uh, they are uh, basically called uh, projections of one uh, of the other camera centers or you can also imagine uh, the intersection of this baseline along the image plane and wherever they intersect that is the, the those are the epipoles and epipolar plane is the plane connecting the camera centers as well as the uh, world coordinate or the world point p and epipolar lines are the intersection of the epipolar plane with the image planes and they usually come in um, not usually actually they always come in corresponding pairs it is possible that they overlap but they will always be 
uh, in pairs because it is uh, obvious that uh, when this plane intersects which is formed by these two uh, um, these points along uh, um, the epipolar plane when it intersects these image planes it will always uh, it will always intersect and it will have uh, a pair and that is why uh, they will always come in corresponding pairs okay um, here is another uh, example of a converging camera so what happens is when you start uh, when the camera start converging so this camera has moved in that direction and this on the clockwise direction and this camera center is moving more or less towards the anti-clockwise direction and the object is in between so basically what is happening is um, this pi and pi dash plane are moving closer to one another so that's why they are calling con converging cameras now imagine um, what will happen if they are trying to converge this line will try to move towards right hand side and this line uh, this epipolar line l dash will try to move towards the left hand side and basically they will try to become parallel here we can see uh, the correspondence of the these two uh, points along uh, along their respective uh, epipolar lines this point uh, is uh, corresponds to this point along its uh, epipolar line and similarly this point corresponds to this point along the its uh, corresponding epipolar line uh, another interesting case here is when you have um, virtually no motion or no angle uh, between two cameras the epipolar lines are almost parallel uh, like in this case and in this case when the motion is parallel to the image plane um, the epipoles lie at infinity uh, so it's really not easy to join them uh, essentially they we say that they lie at uh, infinity um, can you imagine a case where uh, uh, epipoles or epipolar lines are not um, possible to be made can you imagine think about it for a moment there might be cases where it is not possible to recreate the epipoles sorry not recreate to create the epipoles or to find uh, their corresponding uh, epipolar lines what could those situations be they are simple to imagine one example we already saw before where uh, let's say there is an occlusion in those cases you don't see the object and therefore there is no correspondence although you know in hindsight that maybe it is obs uh, obstructed and the point is actually behind it but when you use this correspondence algorithms or feature detectors to find this uh, feature matches it will be not matched because it's not visible so in those cases uh, it will be missed and there will be no epipolar lines uh, for the corresponding points so it is possible but we are not uh, we, but we will see how to get uh, rid of the these uh, problems and these are practical problems uh, that can be taken care of uh, another interesting example here is uh, the forward motion so let's say you're going inside the tunnel or coming out of the tunnel um, so basically you're keeping your camera system parallel and uh, it, you're moving towards the direction of the depth and in that case you are um, your epipolar lines are uh, like uh, stars uh, not like stars but like uh, rays going away or going out of this point so you can imagine that when you move a step closer in this tunnel these points will move away basically uh, this point will be visible uh, more closer to you and this point will be visible more closer to you in the next frame and so and so on so it's easy to see how uh, the epipolar lines will uh, evolve or they have the same uh, coordinate or they have the same shapes along uh, li like the coming out uh, or going away uh, outside the image uh, plane and the points they basically move along these lines that are radiating from this uh, from this point essentially uh, this point is your epipole both in both the cases um, uh, it's, a, it's at the same location for both the camera centers so uh, this is a very interesting example of uh, uh, epipolar constraint so what is epipolar constraint useful for um, to start with uh, to finding x so if I know if you know so finding x is the basically what it means the 
the world coordinate or the location of the point in the world scene if you know if you know small p here so if i know um, uh, x here and have calibrated cameras so basically you already know in advance what is the focal length what is the intrinsic parameters of both the cameras let's say you have two different cameras k and k dash and you also know the extrinsic uh, relationship uh, you can restrict your x uh, x dash to be along l so you will always find your l uh, x dash along uh, l dash and uh, this this is how you will find the um, uh, uh, location of x uh, or the location of your original point in the world plane uh, world uh, 3d world plane and also will be able to calculate the disc, uh, disparity for the stereo matching pairs um, you, uh, so if you al already know x and x dash correspondences you have calculated the uh, correspondences between two these two images and you already know um, uh, the world po uh, location of the uh, 3d position also then you can also estimate the orientation and the relative position between the cameras as well as the um, 3d position of all the remaining points in the image uh, that is also possible and it's also possible to fit a robust model uh, in an iterative fashion so um, so if you have these projection models of two different uh, cameras in pi and pi dash uh, and if you have x dash uh, if you have some points in this plane and you find uh, some um, uh, potential matches of that point or the feature point in the other uh, pi dash plane then you can use this um, epipolar constraint to reduce um, those potential matches um, by find by matching uh, only to those ones which are uh, which satisfy the epi epipolar constraint and this is how you can also improve your model uh, iteratively so that's why that's what it's called a uh, robust model fitting uh, this is an example where these images are taken of the same uh, s location from different angles and these blue lines correspond to the corresponding epipolar uh, lines and uh, once you have found the correspondences uh, along the polar lines you throw away the remaining um, outliers so it's it's easier to find the inliers uh, using the epipolar constraint as i already discussed okay so uh, we move on to uh, two specific cases where we have um, uh, calibration information with us and where we don't have the calibration information with us so first we begin with a, a people are constrained in calibrated case where we know the camera uh, calibration parameters so we already know the intrinsic parameters and uh, what we do here is x is the world coordinate here 3d scene point uh, we take the inverse of the ca first camera and multiply it with the image coordinate x to get back the 3d scene point which is represented as x hat which is a homogeneous 2d point uh, essentially it is a ray originating from o going through x uh, and merging towards the world um, point uh, similarly in the second plane also you do the same uh, x dash is the uh, uh, 3d scene point in the second camera's uh, 3d coordinate system uh, similarly the correspondent correspondence of x in this another plane is x prime and you take the inverse of the intrinsic camera for the second um, intrinsic parameter of the second camera and then you get x hat dash which is also another ray originating from o dash and uh, meeting this x dash here uh, um, yeah we also define some rotation and translation that relate the x and x dash essentially so how to relate x uh, hat prime and x uh, x hat is uh, you do some rotation and then add some translation to um, get from to go from one point to the other point um, this is how it is basically um, yeah, what you do is essentially um, so uh, x hat prime you take a rotation you apply a rotation parameter here and then um, uh, do some translation to uh, recover x hat here and this can be written in this form and 
um, in this from this algebraic uh, notation we can write uh, this notation uh, how we come up with this notation is uh, is simple so when we apply rotation to x um, hat uh, prime it's a scalar multiplication so this uh, ray remains in the same plane uh, translation also is in the same plane but when we take a cross product um, of two vectors in the same plane it's uh, something which is perpendicular to this plane so this matrix will be or this vector is perpendicular to this epipolar plane and when we take a scalar product of uh, two perpendicular vectors it's uh, usually zero and because of this uh, reason uh, it is easy to see uh, it, it, we are able to create a, a compact representation of uh, recovering x hat from x hat prime so uh, this whole matrix can be written as e which is called the essential matrix uh, e is a matrix 3 cross 3 which relates corresponding points or corresponding pairs of normalized homogeneous image points across the pairs of images for k calibrated cameras so why are we writing cameras is it, even if you have multiple cameras you can do it so let's say you have a third image here and the fourth image there and you want to go from first to the fourth image you have to apply three uh, transformations so you will have three different um, uh, equation like this and you can actually do um, associative uh, ordering of uh, this transformation and then recover the point in the first image to the last image this is how um, things are handled when you have a video stream or when you move around your camera to a fixed uh, path so in those cases you already know the intrinsic parameter of the camera you know the motion that you're going to take so you have all those information you use that information to uh, map one image point from uh, to map point or a feature in one image to the second image and that's how you find these correspondences okay but what if we don't know let's say we have these two image of the same uh, location let's say of uh, Eiffel Tower of Paris you have the same image um, let's say you grab, grab those images from Flickr or from Google images let's say uh, so you don't have the intrinsic uh, parameters of the camera you also don't know what motion rotation translation uh, that took place while capturing those images but you want to find the correspondences you want to recover the intrinsic um, parameters of the camera and uh, that matrix to be estimated is called this essential matrix now uh, essential matrix here it is written as the uh, cross product of t with a, a rotation matrix here as we saw um, T X that this notation is um, a matrix representation of a cross product so a cross product is defined like this and it can be written in the matrix form in this manner uh, it's a simple um, mathematical trick to write a cross product in the matrix notation the reason why we are doing this is because we are handling here everything with matrices and vectors and so it's easier to um, let go of the cross product notation and uh, write in a matrix form and that is that's all it is it's a small trick you can go to the list uh, this link to learn more about how to convert uh, the cross product notation into a matrix representation okay so let's uh, look at some uh, properties of uh, these matrices and um, um, see what uh, what we can uh, learn from there um, uh, this translation matrix here is actually uh, can be written in this form so if you uh, uh, see this matrix here it is actually uh, if, if you take a negative of this it is equivalent to the transpose of this matrix and that is what uh, a skew symmetric matrix means so this translation matrix is um, a skew symmetric matrix which means that its tra transpose is uh, the negative of the matrix okay so some properties of the essential matrix um, when you multiply the x prime with e you get the epipolar line associated with this point in uh, uh, in basically in the other image and if you multiply e transpose with x you get the epipolar line associated with x uh, this can be interchangeable so don't worry about uh, why w in one case we are using transpose and the other e if you denote E here, you have to use E transpose here. 
and that's all it is um, when you take a scalar product of uh, e epipolar poles with the essential matrix it gives zero because they both are um, lying in the same uh, plane e is singular which means that um, when you take the determinant uh, sorry uh, the rank is 2 and therefore uh, it cannot be uh, estimated in 3 cross 3 fashion and it has 5 degrees of freedom 3 for rotation and 2 for t um, because it's um, uh, scaling parameters other others are scaling parameters basically um, so we saw the use usefulness of epipolar constraint in uh, the calibrated cases but what if we don't know k and k prime k and k prime represents the intrinsic parameters of the two cameras which captured images um, the two images and uh, what if we are we can write uh, if you don't know these parameters then can we write the same epipolar constraint in terms of unknown normalized constraints that's the question right so let's say we don't know uh, k and k prime um, x ha hat can be uh, multiplied with k we, we get back x uh, this is the essential matrix uh, a popular constraint here written in the essential matrix form and similarly when we have x hat prime uh, we uh, multiplied uh, k prime we get back x prime right so we know these two uh, relationship and can we um, write with write it with uh, in a in, in a more fundamental form so let's say you have x prime you multiply with the um, matrix f in uh, x transport you get zero so this f matrix uh, which r uh, replaces the e matrix here is called the fundamental matrix um, and and therefore we can define similar relationship so uh, you can also think uh, fundamental matrix uh, to be more general form of uh, epipolar constraint where if we if we know the camera intrinsic parameters uh, this relationship becomes uh, like this where we uh, it becomes an essential matrix so essential matrix is a special case of fundamental matrix where we already have where, where we already know the intrinsic parameters of the cameras um yeah that's that's what uh, the fundamental matrix means uh, the properties are more or less similar uh, as previously mentioned of um, the um, you know, essential matrix like uh, we multiply x prime it gives 0 is the epipolar line L associated with x prime f transpose x will be giving the epipolar line L prime associated with x in the other figure um, f is again singular which means uh, determinant is 0 and it has a rank 2 um, again with the epipolar epipoles is basically multiplications are 0 uh, in this case f has 7 degrees of freedom um, uh, the two additional degrees or the uh, I think it's not 9 it's uh, sorry it's not 9 it's 7 um, yeah 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 it, it's, it's the same sorry so uh, f has 7 degrees of freedom 9 entries it has 3 cross 3 entries but uh, 2 are up for scale as we saw in the case of essential matrix as well so f is a 3 cross 3 matrix rank 2 uh, one column is a linear combination of the other two as we can see here so we can write the fundamental matrix in this sense in the in this form a b c d e f these two columns and the third column is a scaled alpha first column is scaled by alpha and added to the um, scaled column uh, second column scaled by beta and then that's how we generate the third column and this is why it is a degenerate matrix where its rank is 2 and not 3 and um, if we assume one of these values then it's easy to infer the other value and therefore there is th there are no 9 degrees of freedom only 7 uh, given x projected from x into image 1 f constrains the projection of x prime into image 2 to an epipolar line this is the constraint or the epipolar constraint that uh, uh, that we have been discussing until now um, in, the, in the next lecture we will see how we can um, estimate the fundamental matrix and we can actually estimate each and every point and then we can recover the camera parameters and if we are able to find the camera parameters basically we can calibrate different um, yeah uh, once so we will know the cal calibration of the cameras and if we know that 
then it's easy to translate uh, every point from one image to the other image or find their direct correspondences um, yeah so we will see in the next uh, uh, part how to calculate the fundamental metrics as well as uh, how to do model uh, robust model fitting using ransack algorithm thank you